Praise Jesus. Praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm from the Rock Intercessor Ministries. I'm here to preach to you today the word of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hoping that some of you will give your light to God today. Hallelujah. Now my message for you today, when faith seems to fail. You see? When faith seems to fail. You see? So I mean, in the Bible, it's full of what, incredible people and women of faith. If you have a look in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, it's catalog of what? Champions of faith. But today, can you, can you imagine any Christian living in their life today without faith? You see, the Bible said this clearly and plainly, that we must live by faith, that the just must live by faith. Romans 1, 17. In fact, he will say faith to faith. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ said, according to your faith, let it be done unto you. Matthew 9, 29. The writer of the Hebrew also said this, apart from faith, it is impossible to please God. Hebrew eleven six. So as you can see, we not only need to possess faith, but also we need a faith that possesses us, you see? But what happens when faith seems to fail? Sometimes you pray, you ask God to do something for you, and he didn't do, he didn't do that for you. What happens to your faith? It seems that faith seems to do what to fail. I mean, sometimes you go out, you go out door, you try to have invent. I remember two years ago, I went to the Santa and the seat to do um, a baptism, and me... Uh, with madam, my wife, a pastor, we prayed and just said, God, hold the rain so that we can complete the baptism. And God hold the rain. But what happens if God did not hold the rain? You see, so my message for you today is what? Faith seems to fail. You see, or for example, you ask God, you pray for, for, for God to give you a husband. And can you imagine the husband went to marry your friend? What are you gonna, what are you gonna say? You see, so faith. Sometimes faith seems to do what to fail, you see? So that is my prayer for you today, for you to open your heart and receive Jesus Christ, you see? Because sometimes you have our loved ones, you pray for them to get healed, and then you just watch them going down, and they didn't get healed. Does it mean God did not answer your prayer, you see? Sometimes faith seems to fail, amen? So my message for you today is to do what? To fasten your hope, fasten your faith, Amen? To the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? The Bible says it is impossible to please God without faith. Amen? Can you imagine you pray for your, your wife or your husband to get here or your children? You say, Heavenly Father, please touch them, hear them, and then they cease to get worse. And you can see them winding down to the grave. Amen? I mean, sometimes you go to the hospital. I mean, there's, there's some people that you can say they're in the hospital. They're, 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 you, you call them like a dead bed because you know that they won't come out from that. You see, so what's going to happen to your faith as a believer? You see, that you believe in God, that you have asked God to hear them up, you see. And the faith seems to do what to fail. So today I want you to get ready. I mean, don't just give up, you know. A true faith is, is to do what to put your faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. I mean, that's why I come here to preach to you today. You see, because sometimes you can see trouble in your life. They're all falling down like the dominions. Amen. God bless you, brother. You see troubles. Sometimes you see trials, temptations, tribulation, trouble, difficulty, disappointment, disagreement, um, headache, pains, fears, tears. They just come like a football player. They come in, they come in level. They come in a line. They come in at a, at, at a goal. What are you going to do? Are you, are you going to just throw down the tower? Are you going to just give up? Are you going to just say, okay, I stop trusting God? That is why I'm preaching to you today. Because why? The Bible have given us the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Amen. If you have, if you have looked into it, you see men and women of faith. Amen. It's there for us to do what? To build up. I, I, anyway, before I go there, I want you to have a look what the Bible says. In the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 36, the writer says this. He said that you have to endure. You need to endure and so that when you have done all this in the will of God, that you may receive what have been promised. Amen. So today, God wants you to do what? To endure. Amen. When faith seems to fail, the word of God is telling you today to do what? To endure. You pray that you need money. You don't have it. The word of God says endure. You pray that you need a job. Coronavirus came. A lot of people lost their job. But the Bible says to do what? For you to do what? To endure. And that is why I'm preaching to you today. Amen. When faith seems to do what? To fail. You see? So you need to learn one thing today. To endure. You see? The Hebrew 11 
say this amazing victories about amazing faith in the men and women of faith you listen to what the bible says in the book of hebrews chapter 32 i will read them and he said what shall i say that's the question for time we fail me to tell of gideon barak Samson, jephard david samuel and the prophet now listen to what he says won't through their faith conquer kingdoms and first justice obtain promises stop the mouth of the lion quench the power of fire escape the edge of the sword we are made strong out of weaknesses became mighty in war put foreign armies to flight women received their dead back to resurrection now he says this listen to this he said now if you if they just ended up if, if i just end up here right now it will seems that that's where the whole story ends but no now listen to what he says he said now the two words some of you don't want to hear is well, some were tortured and they refused to accept what it is can you imagine you are serving god you've been tortured you refuse to do what to uh, to be released why because you have faith in god you see my message for you today when faith seems to do what to say or seems to do what not not to prevail you see and now you listen to this some were tortured refusing to accept release so that they may rise again to a better life others suffered mocking flogging even chains imprisonment uh, some were stoned some were sawn in two they were killed with sword they went about in skin of sheep gold disputed afflicted mistreated verse 38 of whom the war was not worthy watering about in desert in mountains in depths of cave of the earth and i mean you can, you can understand what these people are going through the area christians they have faith in god they do not wither. Amen. That's why I'm reading to you this Hebrew 11 because this is the perfect place for me to pick. Amen. You have to see the catalog of men and women who had their faith in God. And they say all oh, this in. I mean, you need to notice they say where they say must have been wrong with them. Nothing wrong with them. But you can notice what the Bible says about their faith. All these things having obtained the good report that their faith did not receive what was promised. So did God, did, did God don't just pass their report? Of course, God passed their report. Amen? But what God is trying to teach me and you today is this. God's purpose and his will must prevail. Amen? Sometimes you pray for something, you, you're not getting it. I mean, we, 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 we worry a lot, but you know this, in the Bible is telling you that some of them, they did not escape. You see, they want to do what? To stay and endure. Some of them escape. Some of them escape by faith. Some of them endure by faith. So the Bible is trying to tell you today that all, all what they do, all of them have faith. So sometimes faith seems to do what to fail. So now I want you to uh, today I want to give you three proportions, three proportions for you to do what to take and put it into your heart. You see. So one of them is what the, one I call martial faith. You see today many people today that have superficial faith. They have, uh, they have different kind of faith. Some people call it positive faith. He said, today I want you to have a spiritual faith. Amen? I want you to have a biblical faith. I want you to have faith like Samson. I want you to have faith like Gideon. I want you to have faith like David. I want you to have faith like Daniel. And that is why I'm preaching to you today. I mean, we love all these stories in the Bible. Amen? I mean, we even pray. And we give our children, I mean, I know my son Daniel, you see, and when we are little, we, we listen to all these stories about this powerful man of God. You know the story about Daniel, you know the story about Samson, you know the story about David. All these are wonderful stories, amen? And we read, it to our, we read it to our children. But all these people, they did not quit, they endure, they continue, I mean, today you have people in the church today, their faith is so, it's, it's not that strong, they are ready to quit, you see? That's what I call in my short faith. You see, some people they have they have a positive thinking. Positive thinking is not faith. Amen. What about if the things don't work out for you? Is that what you call faith? You see, I want you to do what to accept the word of God today. Amen. To accept Jesus Christ. To accept Jesus Christ is to have faith. Hallelujah. And today I'm praying. I'm praying that through the word of God, through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, that you open your heart and receive Jesus Christ today. Amen. Because the faith I'm preaching to you today is what? Sometimes faith seems to do what? To fail. I mean, you listen to what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10. It says, if you fail in the day of adversity, your strength is small. You see, you see what I mean? I mean, if you've been tested, I mean, sometimes you pray for God to heal you, 
What about if God did not heal? What are you going to do? Are you going to leave church? Some people, they come for instant uh, miracle. Some people, they come for instant deliverance when you come to God. I want you today to do what? To open your heart and accept Jesus Christ today. Amen. Accept him for what he is. Let God be God. Amen. God has purpose in, 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 for your life. Amen. So when things are not working well, the way you think, I want you to do what? To have your faith in God. So my prayer for you today, my message for you today is one. One of the things I want you to notice is what? My short faith. Amen. So now let, let, let me give you the first one. He said these people, they believe in supernatural power of God. So what does that mean? That means that they believe in God. No matter whatever happens, their faith is in God. I mean, you need to see what the Bible says in the book of Hebrews 11, 32 to 35. It, and this is the question I ask. And what more shall I say? For time will fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Japhat, a king, uh, David, Samuel, and the prophet. Whom through faith conquer kingdoms, enforce justice, obtain promises, stop the mouth of the lion, quench the power of, the, power of fire, escape the, sword of, escape the edge of sword, we are made strong out of weaknesses, they become mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women receive, receive the dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept to release so that they might rise again to a better life. This is what they call faith. This is what they call supernatural faith. Amen? This is what they call supernatural deliverance. You see? So friends, this is not, this is, this is not a fairy tale story. I mean, these are the stories being told in the Bible. The, the word of God is true. I mean, the word of God is true. I mean, I mean, you have to imagine when you are there to listen to all these stories. I mean, you have the movies. I mean, you have the movies of what Daniel, David, Samson, Gideon, all these things, you know. I even named my son Daniel for that reason, you see. So when you watch all these movies and you have it in, this, in, the, in the children's uh, stories, I mean, when you are when you are to you listen to about Daniel. I mean, you know what happened to Daniel. You know story about Daniel. I mean, Daniel was praying nonstop. And the, obviously the king refused Daniel. I mean, the people said Daniel was praying. And because of that, they, they reported him to the king. I mean, the Bible said that Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. And by the way, Daniel continued still praying. I mean, it, it, you know what happened? God shot the mouth of the lion. You see? And we love all these stories. But do you know this are faith? I mean, this is not a fairy tale story. I want you today to do what? To see sometimes faith seems to fail. Amen. So my message for you today to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And then you, you, you come around. You also see in the Old Testament, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We love their story, what they did. I mean, they, they have this uh, crazy man, this king, Nebuchadnezzar, and then made them a golden image and kind of forced them, forced everyone to do what? To serve him. But what happened to these three? Three, I call it the three amigos or three crazy guys. They refused to bow down to this filthy image of Nebuchadnezzar. And they were told by, by the king that he's going to throw them into the foreign furnace. And what happened? The king actually did that. They threw them into the fire. And the king also saw that he's not, he couldn't believe his eye. He said he threw these people because why? They refused to bow down to him. They refused to push down. But at the same time, they were not burning. You see, and the King, to his amazement, and obviously God just opened his eye a bit, and he see, he said he saw someone like Son of God, and was in the fire with them. Is it not only three people I throw down there? I mean, what the Bible is trying to tell me and you today is this, to have faith in God. Amen? Have faith in God, because the Bible says when they came out, their cloth was not born. You see? I mean, do you want me to go to David and Goliath? We, we know what happened then. David, a young man, slay. A mighty tall gray at probably maybe nine feet. I mean, some some <laughs> some uh, football, some uh, basketball teams would love to have him. You see, but the Bible says we just with one stone. I mean, just one stone. I mean, people were so afraid of the man because he was so big. David was not afraid of him because he knows that he can get him because as big as he is, can get him with one stone. You see, and we know what happened there because David have victory, you see? And we love all these stories. I mean, you, I, wa I want to bring you also to New Testament. You remember a story about uh, Peter was being thrown into the prison and Peter had a jailbreak. I mean, the angel came there and took him away. And he thought he was sleeping. In fact, he came out from the prison, even if he wanted to go inside the house where they're having prayer meeting. 
It even takes so much time for him to go into the prayer meeting instead of coming out from the prison. So on oh, all this miracle, God is, we are serving a mighty God. So today I want you to put your faith in God, you see? Because when faith seeks to do what? To, to fail, God is there because why? God have a purpose for everything, you see? So today I want you to accept Jesus Christ, amen? Because he's a miracle working God, amen? God do marvelous things, God do supernatural work, incredible work, you see? Even in your heart, in my heart, I mean, God transformed me to me for me to be here to preach to you. I couldn't be here two years ago, three years ago. Amen. But I'm here today. Why? Because it is God's way for me to be here. Because God has given me that faith to believe in Him. Amen. So when faith seems not to exist, when you ask God for something and things not working well the way you plan, I want you to put on your seatbelt. Amen. Put on your seatbelt. Fasten your seatbelt. I mean, find one of God. Find the word of God can be an anchor to your soul. You're going to hold it so tight, you see. And that is why this brings me to, what, to, another, to another point. I want you to, to notice this. You have faith. These people that have so much faith, they refuse to do what? To bow to the king, to the idol worship God. Um, what's his name again? Daniel refused that as well. Uh, Rashak, Mesha, Badu refused that as well. So these are people like me and you. Amen. You need to listen to what the Bible says also in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 35 to 39. He said, The women received their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept the race, so that they might see again a better life. Others suffer mocking, flogging, even shames, imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sown into two, they were killed. We saw they went about in skin shape, goat, destituted, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in desert, in mountains, in dens, in cave, and on the earth. And all these people did not obtain what they were looking for. Because why? We are serving a mysterious God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let God be God. Amen. Let God be God. If your faith seems to fail, I want you today to do what? To put down your faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. You don't let your faith fail because why God have every purpose in life, you see. So what I'm trying to tell you here is this. You remember the prophet talking about people who were stoned to death. You remember prophet, uh, prophet Zechariah was stoned to death. Even Stephen also was stoned to death. Does it mean these people, they are not right with God? No, of course not. I mean... Stephen was filled with the Holy Spirit the same way Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. I mean, Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit to the point where he got 3,000 people I saved. Stephen also was filled with the, with the Holy Spirit. Perhaps he got 3,000 stone. You see? So both of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. So what I'm trying to tell you here is this. God can be working in your life in different way from the way he's working in my life. Amen? The, the, the both can be true. Amen? Stephen was stoned to death. Peter was free from prison. It's the same God that we are serving. Amen? Does it mean um, Stephen did something wrong? No. Does it mean God loves uh, love, uh, Peter than Stephen? No. You see? So today I want you to do what? To put your faith in Jesus Christ. You see? Now listen to what the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 37. It said that some of them were sore into two. So this refers to prophet Isaiah. You remember about prophet Isaiah was sore into two? Amen? The king just wanted to polish Christian. You know, he, he just want to humiliate him. He saw him into two. The same way today, the word of God that you are hearing today coming out from my mouth, the people that bring it out for you and for me, they were punished. Amen? They were killed. They were so into two. You see, you are all walking around. You are all walking around now, enjoying life. The people who have been brought this good message for me and for you, they were killed. Our Lord Jesus Christ was also killed. You see? So what I'm trying to offer you here today is this. The Bible said they even went about in the sheep cloth, goat cloth. So you have to realize this. People were, people were Christian back in the day. They were being killed. The same thing today. Go to Muslim countries. They are still killing Christians. I mean, last two months I was preaching about family that were killed in Pakistan. Why? Because they are Christians. It's still going on today. I mean, Christians have been punished. Even in this country, sometimes I come here to preach. You can see the police come to bother me. Now they stop bothering me because my God has talked into their heart. They come here four times to bother me because where they are hearing the word of God. I mean, the same way today, Christians have been persecuted. Even in this country, they are called Christian country. You see? So what I'm trying to tell you here is this. If you are a Christian suffering, you need to do what? Remember, put your faith in God. God bless you, sir. God bless you.
Amen. So that is why I'm preaching today, you see? Because when faith ceases to do what? To fail. I want you to do what? To have your faith in God. I mean, you have to go to Rome to see, to see what they've done to Apostle Paul. I mean, you see what they've done to Peter. You see what they've done to beloved John. They bore him in the hot water, but God refused him to die. You see? So what I'm trying to tell you here is this. When faith ceases to fail, we, the Christian, need to do what? Realize what God is doing in our life, you see? There was a man of God, that there was a man called um, Warren Warren, what he said. He said, do not try to get theology from, from your circumstances. But if you do that, you come to the conclusion that God does not love you. So I give an I, I example based on, this, based on this word. Now, you remember Lazarus? The Bible said this in the book of John 11, 11 5. The Bible said clearly and plain that Jesus Christ loved Martha and her sister, and then Lazarus. So that is a matter of fact, not if or but. Because why? The Bible said that God loved them. And now you have to realize this. Now, like, like, uh, Lazarus gets sick and then eventually he died. And you have to listen to what the Bible said, that God still loved them, you see. Now, you have to see. The same God that loved them, led Zacharias to stay in that place for four days. I mean, where he was, where he was buried for four days. Does it mean does it, does it mean he doesn't love him? He loved him. What, so what I'm trying to tell you here is this. Even though God loves you, you can still go through trials and tribulations. Amen? I mean, the, the two can be true. I mean, you, you pray for God to heal you. He doesn't heal you. It doesn't mean he hurt you. No. That's a purpose why God didn't heal you that moment. I want you today to let God be God, you see? Because the, the same way Jesus Christ said this, that he is glad that Zacchaeus was dead. Can you imagine that? He said that he's glad that he was dead. Why is he say that he's glad? Because he knows that he's going to go there to raise him so that the people who are with him can see that he wasn't there when he died. You see? So that is why I'm preaching to you today. You see, friends, I want you to understand the whole story that if you come to God today and if you ask God for something, for maybe, for instance, you ask God for a job and that job didn't, didn't, come, out for, didn't come out the way you want, then you don't have to leave God. You don't have to leave church. I mean, you have to realize how God works. I mean, God wants you to do what? To love you from your heart. I mean, you don't want to use God as pay as you go. You see, because people are doing that. They don't have, they don't have mature faith. They have immature faith. I mean, is, is, is it only when things are going your way for you to go and praise God? You see what I mean? I mean, sometimes when we fall sick, that's when we remember about God. Just what I mean? Sometimes when it's only Christmas, that's when only people go to church. Sometimes when it's only Easter, that's when people go to church. So what I'm trying to tell you here is this. I want you to do what? To serve God, even in your difficulties, you see? I mean, you really have to listen to what the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 35 to verse 38. I love this so much. This is a question. He said, what shall we separate us from the love of Christ? That's a big question. What can separate me and you from the love of Christ? I will tell you absolutely nothing, you see? And then he says this, Shall tribulation or distress, persecution, fame, nakedness, danger or sword? That's the question. And as it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are regarded as a sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him. It's talking about Jesus Christ. Through him who love us. Amen. So that means God loves me and you. Are you going to try us? You don't have clothes. You don't have food. You don't have home to sleep. The Bible is telling you to do what? To have faith in God. God bless you, sir. Amen? And that is why I'm preaching to you. When faith seems to do what? To fail. When faith seems to fail, I want you to have faith in God. Amen? You listen to what the Bible says in the book of Mark 11, 24. It says, have faith in God. So simple. Amen? It doesn't matter what you are going through. Today, I want you to put your faith in God because the Bible says nothing shall separate us from the love that is in Christ Jesus Christ. Amen. You have to realize the word of God is yes and amen. Amen. All the promises that is in the Bible for me and for you is yes and amen. Whatever thing that you are going through, I want you to stay put. Amen. I mean, you have to, you have to realize it. What about, uh, what about uh, John the Baptist? Amen. John the Baptist is coming to difficulty. Even for the fact that John the Baptist nearly quit. You see, but John the Baptist was a great man. You see, he know who Jesus Christ is. I mean, even Jesus Christ said that John the Baptist was only man that was being born greater than every other man, being born of woman. You see, what a good compliment that God has given to John the Baptist. But the same John the Baptist had a spare of what that. Perhaps John the Baptist couldn't even nearly give up. 
You know, he nearly threw down the, as they say, throw down the tower. Or throw in the tower, you see. He nearly, he nearly ready to quit. Why? Because John the Baptist who was in the liver Jordan. I mean, preaching. He said, come. He was, he was the forerunner for Jesus Christ. He was preaching all the good news. He was, the Bible said that he had a, a belt of skin. He only eat on it. Some people think he just only ate on it. He didn't preach the gospel. No. He was preaching about war repentance throughout his preaching. Amen. He did all this thing, but the same John, John the Baptist came into question to kind of ask himself, why is it that he doing all this thing for God? He was faithful to God, and then now he's in prison. And he can hear. I mean, can you imagine? He's in the prison. He's in dungeon. In dirty, sloppy, smelly dungeon. And he was there. Obviously, his head was ready to, to be cut off. But the same man of God, John the Baptist, preached all this things about repentance, but yet he's as in the prison, he was wondering he can hear Jesus Christ, he needs the sick, doing all this miracle and he's kind of asking himself to the point where I have to send some people to ask Jesus Christ to even find out if Jesus Christ was the Messiah or are we still expecting somebody else what am I trying to tell you here is this sometimes faith seems to fail sometimes faith seems to fail this happened to the great man of who John the Baptist, amen we is even in number one list that Jesus Christ have said. There's no any man that been born of woman greater than John the Baptist, you see. And he came to do what? To ask all these questions, you see. I mean, he had a doubt. You see, so what I'm trying to tell you here is this. Even if you have a doubt, I want you to recall back and to have faith in God, you see. Because if you have a doubt, the Bible says you, you, you're like a sea that have been toasted back and forth, you see. So when faith is to fail, I want you to do what? To find one Bible verse that you can use an anchor. I have one for myself. Amen. You can pick one for yourself. I have the one that the Bible tells me in the book of Proverbs chapter 4 verse 22 that uh, the word of God is healing to my flesh. So anytime I have miscommunications, I go there and I hold as an anchor. And then I want you to do the same thing. Pick one verse. I mean, you have to listen to what Jesus Christ said to the people being sent by John. This is in Matthew, Matthew 11 verse 6 to verse 4 to 6. And this word Jesus Christ answered answer to them. He said, go and tell John what you hear. The blind receive their sight. The lay walk. The, 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 the lepers were cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead risen up. Risen up, and the poor have received the good news to them, and blessed is the one who is not offended by me. I mean, you have to understand this. I mean, he's talking to John. He said, John, my son, I made the blind to see, I made the deaf to hear, I made the lepers to clean, I even raised a dead man, and yet you are in prison, but do not get offended if I do not come and give you jail out. That's what I mean. So this is the God that we are serving, friends. So today I want you to do something. To do what? To put your faith in God. Not only based on His miracle. I want you to put your faith in God. Even when things are not going well for you in life. I want you to put faith in God. When things are not going well. Not when things are running smooth. And then things go bad. You are ready to do what? To throw in the tower. Or to quit. No quitting. Amen. You have to get your mind made up. I got my mind made up since I've been coming here. And if I give my life to God, I got my mind made up. It doesn't matter whether good or bad, whether food or hungry, whether sick in life, whether healthy or not healthy, whether nakedness or cloth, I will serve my God. Amen. So when faith seems to fail, I want you to do what? To put your faith in God. Amen. Listen to where a wise man says this. He said, faith is not only receiving things from God so much, but what we are accepting from God, what God, have, what God have given, or what God allows our faith is. What a wonderful statement, you see. So today I want you to know one thing. I want you to have, if not close, amen, if not close in your heart, in your soul, in your spirit, in your body, just in case when you make a prayer, God did not answer you, you see. You have to, I mean, I mentioned to you already about Rashak, Meshach, Abadinegu, we know what happens to them. I mean, you have to, you have to, you have to look what the king says to them. He said, "Bow down to watch this image. If you don't bow down, I'm gonna throw you into the furnace, into the fire furnace." And we understand what what the answer was. I mean, you have to find this in the book of Daniel, chapter three, verse sixteen. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, said, said to the king, "Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to answer you in this matter. So that means they don't need to study about it. They just tell him we don't need to answer in this matter." If this be so, our God who we serve is able to deliver us from the burning furnace and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. 
But now notice verse 18. He said, if not, be known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship your God or the image that you have set up. You see? So what this is trying to tell me and you is this. Faith, a powerful faith is called mature faith. A strong faith is called mature faith. A steady fast faith is called mature faith. I want you today to have mature faith. Amen? Don't have a mature faith, you see? Because you have to realize that they say to the king, our God is able. So they believe that they know God will save them. But if not, I mean, listen, if not, if not, it's not able to do what? To save us. We still will not bow down to your filthy image. Amen? Many of you today, you are binding down to different things. Many of you today, you are binding down to your wife or your to husband, to your children. You are not going to church because of them. You are, not, you, you, you are not making your way to the salvation. Many of you today, you are binding down to your cloth. Many of you today, you are binding down to your drinking habit. Many of you, you are binding down to your sexual immorality. Many of you, you are binding down to your iPhones, to your mobile phones. Many of you, you are binding down to your lap dance, your laptop. Many of you, you are binding down to crazy things. You see, but the word of God today is telling you to do what? To have faith in God. Even when faith seems to do what? To fail. I want you today to do what? To bear in mind. To have this, if not, clause in your heart. Just in case when you ask God for something. And if that's not the will of God. That's not the purpose of God. If whatever you ask God did not come to, true. I don't want you to run away from the church. I don't want you to run away from God. I want you to have a steady fast faith. You see? Because they say to the king, no matter anything that you do. We will do what we will serve our God, you see. And I mean, this also remember back King Herod as well. This brings me to King Herod. Remember, King Herod put James to, to prison and eventually he killed James. And the same King Herod also took Peter. But I'll tell you earlier on, Peter was Je Jeffrey. I mean, it was Jeffrey because the angel of God took him out, you see. So, this, this are the, these are two people serving one God. One of them received punishment to death. Capital punishment, the other one God free by God. It is the same God. They are still Holy, Holy Spirit filled people. You see? So my question to you is this. How, do, how are you going to answer this question? I mean, do, do, does it mean God loves Peter more than, more than James? Of course not. It's the same God. He loves both of them, but the will of God must do what? Must be fulfilled in the both lives. You see? As I'm preaching to you today. Someone else is preaching to you in Pakistan. Maybe the person in Pakistan is going to go more, more, more stress or more, or more trouble. I'm, I'm free here preaching to you. Hallelujah. But does it mean the person in Pakistan don't have faith that I have in God? No. We have the same faith. We have the same God. But what I'm trying to tell you today, when faith ceases to fail, I want you to do what? To believe God, you see? Because we I have a serving God. God do what he wants to do. He do what is like. God don't need your permission. <laughs> God don't need your permission. Let God be God. Let the will of God happen in my life. Let the will of God happen in your life. Now the question is this. If the will of God happen in your life and then you do not get healed as you have asked God to heal you, I want you today to do what? To have that, if not, close in your heart. Every time you pray, it doesn't mean your faith is weak, no? But you know that no matter what, whatever happens, why? You are do what? You will serve God no matter what happens, you see? I mean, you have to listen to what Job says. Job says, I will serve you, God, even though you slay me. What a wonderful statement. I will say the same thing today. God, I will serve you even though you slay me. Hallelujah. Even though I don't have food, even, even, if, even if I don't have wife, I don't have children, I don't have house, I don't have car, I don't have job, I don't have anything. I will serve Almighty God. Hallelujah. Because this is why I'm preaching to you today. Amen. This is why I come here every day to preach to you. Why? Because some of you need to understand this. Amen. When you ask for something, when you ask God to do you something, and God did not fulfill it, I want you not to walk away. Amen. I want you to remain put. Stay put. Get locked down with God. Hallelujah. Get locked down with God. When faith seems to fail. You see? So Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 to 18 says this. He said, through the fig tree, should not be blossomed, nor the fruit be on the vines, nor the produce of only fail, and the field yield no fruit, and the floor being cut off from the from the fold, and there be no hair in the store. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will rejoice, and I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. Amen. God bless you, sir.
I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. You know what that means? No matter anything you're going through in life, you still have to praise God. Whether you are sick, you praise God. Whether you have food to eat, you praise God. If you don't have food to eat, you praise God. Anything that you in your life today, I want you to do what to glorify God, no matter what. Amen. You wake up this this morning, thank God. Before you go to bed, you thank God. As you walk into work, you thank God. As everything that you do, you need to do what glorify the name of God. Because when all said and done, I want you to do what to have faith in God. I mean, you have to remember this. This brings me to my top, my my top topic. Means what? Faith based on what? Set to promises of God. Listen to what the, the scripture says in Second Corinthians chapter one to 20, twenty to twenty two, and it says, "For the matter, how many promises God have made? They are yes in Christ, Amen, and through Him, Amen." It's been spoken by the glory of God. We assume the scripture that God promises we never fail, Amen. That's what I assume in my life. The word God never lies. I mean, the Bible says, let us be right, but God be the truth. Jesus Christ never lied. Jesus Christ said, his word is yes and amen. The same way today, I want you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Amen. If you don't have Jesus Christ, you have no life. Amen. You can pretend, you can massage it. I mean, you, 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 you can try to do everything that you want, but if you don't have Jesus Christ, you do not have a life. Amen. And that is why I'm telling you today, when faith seems to fail, I want you to do what? To put your faith in God. Because the Bible says in the Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 to 22, it says this, that the word of God and his promises, his word, is here and amen. I mean, you have to see what the Bible says in the book of Hebrews 11, 39 to 40. It says this, all these people true, commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God have provided something better for us that apart from us that we should not be made perfect what a conclusion i mean that also includes me and you you see when you read the bible talking about the people in the past god is talking to you how do you think god talked to you god talked to you through his through his word amen so the word of god is talking to you today amen the bible says in the book of romans chapter 10 Verse 17. It says, Faith come by hearing and hearing the word of Jesus Christ. And then you also have in the book of Romans chapter 1, verse 7, 17. It said, The just, the righteous must do what? Live by faith, faith to faith. The Bible says we shouldn't, we shouldn't walk by sight, but we should do what? Live by faith. And that's why I come to offer you today. Have faith in God. Amen. Christ have come and died. We just celebrated Christmas and He set you free. So when everything goes wrong, in life, I want you to do what? To have faith. To have that, if not, closure in your heart, in your mindset. Amen. Got your mind made up. Amen. Bad, good report, bad report. Stay, have faith in God. Why? Because God has purposes in this life to do what? To fulfill your life, you see. So today, remain blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.